and then punch him in the mouth, even say he's fucking swollen. Welcome to another Three Aficionados. We're here uh, talking about all things analog. Cars, watches, just an excuse to have a drink and admire Daniel's radical bandana. Radical. I think that's the first time I've said radical since the 80s. And with that, today we're going to talk about uh, some important watch news, uh, grievances that I think uh, Daniel would love to to uh, share with us. And then uh, that's obviously, of course, the Omega Swatch, uh, Moon Swatch. And then uh, I will have some very interesting car news, which spins off into what's in the news cycle. So a little spoiler alert, it has all wheel drive and it goes like stank. So let's get into it. Let's pop it off. Daniel's going to have his sexy tea and Petey is going to be on his fifth beer for now. I think we're going to have to eventually have that intervention. <laughs> Two, one, pop it. That. Oh, that yeah. Little... Jealous. Is that a little castle of tea bags? This was a gift from a friend of mine. It's the Ahmed tea from uh, London there. And um, if if you couldn't tell it's from London, they just threw it in the uh, classic, <laughs> classic Big Ben there. That's awesome. Drinking it out of my lovely Pharaoh's mug. Pharaoh's mug. Thank you. Yes. Nice. Yes, beautiful. yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, delicate. I'm a delicate flower tonight. About his liver versus his kidney. <laughs> that does not apply to your liver, but we will get him a transplant after this so that he can join us back in uh, beer town. Peter, what's uh, what are you drinking there? Um, I, I honestly have never drinking this before, but I had a fire the other night and someone left it and I didn't go to the liquor store. So we're drinking a truly watermelon kiwi and it is not good, but we're making it, we're making it work <laughs> for what it is. So no it's raspberry. Funny. It's warm too. It's pretty gross. So, but that's sounds like okay. one of the worst things I've ever heard. It's pretty nasty. I'm not gonna lie. The raspberry definitely is like way here compared to compared to the. There's a lot of other things that are much better than this. Let me tell you. You're a resident fruity alcoholic beverage man. Yes, sir. I appreciate how he enunciates the word as well. Like raspberry. The raspberry. Raspberry. Is that a word uh, way of pronouncing raspberries? I, I, I got that raspberry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the raspberry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. What are you drinking, Steve? Well, I'm drinking Innocent Gun. Thanks for asking. And it's a smooth and buttery Scottish golden beer. It's uh, brewed in casks. So it has that scotch taste. I, I haven't had it for so long. It was like back in my, you know, good old days of med school and thinking that I was cultured blending liquor and beer all together. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I don't know about always having it, but it's a nice change of pace. I still prefer the uh, Leffa. And, but it turns out that the Leffa is like extremely expensive. All beers are like 18 bucks plus nowadays so expensive. yeah so we're all just going to go over to peter's place and just drink random warm coolers that people <laughs> leave in his fridge or not fridge <laughs> cheers boys cheers, cheers guys. Time. all right what what are we uh wearing on the wrist here uh daniel what's matching your your bandana today well, thank you thank you for asking I'm rocking my Victorinox Dive Master 500, which I love, and it uh, goes well with my outfit. Thank you. What about you guys? Tell us about the uh, the outfit for the podcast mm. who cannot admire your lovely aesthetic. <laughs> I've got a beautiful yellow bandana on, and a, a nice uh, nice blue shirt. Um, and, uh, earlier today I was out driving in my car. It's relevant to the color scheme here. And, um, this, uh, this moving van pulled up beside me and this guy rolls his window down and goes, yo man, what's that, uh, what's that image that you have in your back window? I said, oh, that's, 
the Ukrainian coat of arms, you know, showing my showing my support. He goes, man, that is so cool. I mean, that logo just looks so cool. I'm going to have to look that up. Thanks, man. And then drives off and it's like, I don't know if you got the point, but I'm <laughs> glad you're excited about it. He's yeah. just picked out his next tr- tramp stamp. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't seem like the tramp stamp type. No. <laughs> no. no. He, wasn't like, he didn't have the really good je ne sais quoi of Steve. Well, no. Not quite there. He, no. I don't think he'd look quite as good in lingerie. No. Well, <laughs> but he does. <laughs> well, it's quite as willing to shave their legs as you, so... <laughs> You haven't seen my legs. They are hairy as fuck. (laughs) That's Dr. Steve talking. Peter is uh, a unique one. I unfortunately know too much of his body hair square (laughs) square footage. (laughs) So uh, tell me about you guys. (laughs) Yeah, let's move on. I got you. Let's move on. (laughs) What what is Peter wearing on the wrist to not catch his body hair? I have, yeah, this is a non, this definitely does not catch your body hair. I don't think this thing has ever pinched my my hair before with the NATO strap. I would say if you're looking for something for comfort, I would say probably top top of the list. But uh, yeah, I'm wearing my Tudor, uh, the bronze in all its glory, the black by bronze. It's quite beautiful. I, uh, I don't, I can't remember exactly what this, if this dial would just be called the bronze or if it's orange or what the heck they, they actually call it from the, from Tudor, but I love it and it's great. And yeah, if anyone's watching the video, you've probably seen it multiple times, but if not, you can look it up. It's it's the orange bezeled black bay bronze. That's a beautiful Look it up, watch. motherfuckers. I look Wait. it up. It, on Wait. the green NATO strap. I actually really like that. This is one of my favorite things, though, is the NATO strap. I find it compliments it well. Yeah. I wanted to ask you what brand NATO strap it is and if you like it enough to recommend it as something that we are not receiving any kind of sponsorship for. Or if you don't like it and you would say avoid it and find a different one. Tudor should so, definitely sponsor us. So yeah, yeah I was going to say it's a, it is actually a Tudor strap. I, uh, I got it from uh, actually um, not, not the, I can't, what's the one in Chinook? The, the jewelry store. Yeah, Burks. Yes, yes. I went in Burks and, and got it. It was a while ago because I tried to see if I could get another one a while back and they don't carry it anymore because this watch is a very weird size. It's 43 millimeter. So it's, it's, they don't carry, I don't think standard, but they happen to have this. And I, I kind of either wanted like a, the black one or because the one that comes with it, and I don't think they, they come with it anymore, but it came with it when I bought mine is like super light tan. And I tried it before on this and I just find it doesn't really do it justice. Like it just kind of looks strange. So yeah. I find it almost just kind of complements it well. I think I don't know. I don't know if the black would even do as good as this. I think this kind of does it for me. So I just cool. assumed that it was the strap that it came on, but I remember you showed it to me when you first bought it. It wasn't on a bracelet, was it? No, it came on. It came on a leather. Uh, oh, okay. Leather. Yeah, it comes on a leather strap, and then it also came with a NATO strap that is like super super tan kind of thing, but. For the, for the price that you, like, I guess for the comparison to the watch, but I mean, I think it was like 200 and some dollars for the, for the nail strap. And they said it was like 50% off at the time, which I was just like, well, for 50, but I guess again, you're getting it from Tudor and I'm cheap. So that's my, that's my <laughs> issue. But uh, besides that, I, I used to think it like, wasn't going to last very long. So it seemed to like wear very quickly. But now it hasn't seemed to like wear very much more. But like the bottom of it is like like it is pretty beaten up kind of thing. But I don't know. It's it's an NATO strap, right? It doesn't really matter. So and you're a paramedic. Watch fall off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not like beaten up. Yeah, exactly. It's got that Peter Patina. Exactly. Totally. Like misbehaving people who need help. If Peter shows (laughs) up and you step out of line, you watch out. (laughs) <laughs> you watch out exactly. whenever you see peter coming with that wrist action you better just try to get out of the way and not get his strap up because <laughs> that thing will light up in a black light 
Hey, what's going on with you? I'm just drinking. Mr. But I've also got to... I've also got to watch just to stunt on all the hype masters. Got the uh, Omega Speedmaster I stole back off my wife. The moon is that real? With the Hezolite <laughs> crystal, and it's actually not plastic. And Wait. I got I, I, this was my first major uh, premium, like a uh, really nice watch. I actually started it with the Victorinox. I think that was the big gateway, and this replaced the Victorinox. So this is the purest version. It's the full moon watch, the hand wound movement, and the Hezolite uh, dome. So it does not have the sapphire crystal. And I am so glad I went with the Hezolite. It shows scratches easily, but if you really wanted, you can do the, um, there's like a special little cream, you know, probably generated from Peter, Peter's wrist yeah. action. But uh, it, uh, it just has such a vintage vibe. You can see how it kind of refracts the light and just has this bubble appeal. It just reminds me of like 80s uh, board games and like they had those plastic dome things and it just has all this vintage vibe to it. It's just like the, the watch that would be unkillable went to the moon. Um, it's got, uh, I've got it on the rally strap. That's uh, the Omega deployant. So it is originally from Omega and the deployant's pretty nice. Uh, it's no... Rolex deployment, but it is very elegant and mm -hmm. quite, quite good on the wrist. And uh, the bracelet uh, is sized to my wife's wrist. And he, she was like, what the hell is that? She's like, put it back. So I had to wear it just for this event and then I'll put it back for her. Uh, but I actually enjoy it the most seeing it on her wrist. She wears it much better than I do. I still really love it. It's amazing that uh, it fits a, a very slim, even more slender wrist than mine with, you know, that uh, fairly large uh, case size. But yeah, I, I like yeah. it a lot, yeah. 42 millimeter. Um, and then you've got the uh, the case back that has the first cool. watch on the moon. And nice uh, the inside of the strap, you can kind of see it's got the Omega bits, I think. Mm -hmm. You can't really see it, but it's really nice. Anyways. For those who are still awake on the podcast, <laughs> uh, we'll just get into the uh, the watch news that this kind of leads into. Of course, lots of hype around this, and we thought that we were a bit of ahead of the curve, but we clearly are not. We were thinking <laughs> about uh, trying to figure out how to pick this up. Uh, Daniel, luckily, is in Toronto, one of the uh, places that had the Swatch store. This is the Moon Swatch, Omega Swatch uh, collaboration that is almost like a full, um, you know, reimagining of the exact case impression of the, the watch. Um, but it's made out of the bioceramic material, um, which is like ceramic plus some sort of repurposed plasticky kind of thing. And then it's got the quartz movement in it. Um, and it comes with kind of a shitty strap. It's definitely not as good as the straps that you've seen on the show or heard on the show if you're just listening. Um, obviously, everyone's really keen on these different uh, planet variations to, of course, go for the mission to Uranus, which uh, has really led to a lot of ridiculous, stupid jokes. Um, it's overdone and overplayed, so we won't go down there until uh, Daniel shows his b-hole. And then uh, we'll just uh, go through it. What do you think, boys? Were, were we wrong to even be interested in this? And Daniel, you've got to share your impression of the ordeal that you went through. Well, why don't you guys go first then? Let's hear what you have to say about it. Before Daniel shits all over it. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't want to destroy everything that they have to say until they say it first. <laughs> you don't want to preemptively shit on what we have to say. <laughs> I don't want to go Eminem full freestyle rap battle in 8 Mile and shut down everything you're about to say before you say it. So I'll wait until you say it this time. Just to this time out of courtesy. Peter? Do you yeah. have any hope so, left now? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, if, if it pops up, I definitely would not be as concerned about trying to get multiple. Uh, I still think I would like to get one just because in, like, the near future, I don't know if I would be able to uh, 
be getting a Speedmaster. So, and I don't know if a Speedmaster would just be on the top of my priority list, if I'm being honest. Like, it's not even that. Like, it's just something that I wouldn't like, like maybe one day, but not something. So this is kind of, for me, just kind of a cool option to be like, oh, like I have like a, you know, a little piece of kind of like a, the watch, like kind of history. And I guess in this case, more like the watch hype, but um, yeah, I wouldn't, I don't think I'll be buying more than one unless like I like, unless like someone like my dad wants one or something like that, but I don't, uh, yeah, that's really about it. Cause I've looked at like, I was looking at Speedmasters for a while back then, but I just like, I don't know if I, I get, I have no clue what I want. Maybe I would get a Speedmaster. I don't know. I just don't, it just, just isn't to me. It didn't seem like something that it would be in like the near future for a watch purchase. So this kind of was just like, oh, this would be like the gateway to be like, oh, I own like a, you know, a fake Speedmaster kind of thing, but it's not a fake Speedmaster. Well, it is a fake, but it's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not like I'm saying like, well, I'm not rocking a fake watch. It's kind of like a, you know, replica in a good way. So that's kind of my idea of uh, as I can see Daniel just cracking his neck ready to be <laughs> like, yeah, like, uh, don't you worry, boy. So I'm ready to pull out that b-hole. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta I gotta still play devil's advocate for it. I think that for the price point that it was initially going to be launched at, you know, we all got really excited when I sent it out to the boys and I saw that it was coming. And uh, the media announcement went out for $320 Canadian, and then it's like 200 US. It's uh, a, a great steal. It's an awesome design, and it's timeless. Um, obviously, I think that uh, subsequently, there's a lot of things that have overshadowed the watch itself. But for the price point, it's really interesting. It's kind of fun to see it in different color variations. I think that the standout, if you just didn't buy into the hype of the Tiffany dial kind of color of the moment is this mission to Jupiter, which has the more, I don't know what this is, kind of a beigey cream. Uh, and then it has this, the orange hands that harken back to the, um, what's it called? The, they actually had a, a speed master that was based on the um, Japanese something. I, I keep on thinking Astro Boy, but it was before that. Uh, but it was a pretty interesting variation. I, I go ahead and Daniel, you can go ahead and shit on it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to say that the first issue that I take with the watch is the name of the watch and the decision to put Speedmaster on the name or, or on, on the dial. Um, it's not a Speedmaster. It's just not. <laughs> And I think that's just such a heavy posing BS thing to do to settle for something like this when you want a Speedmaster and then to try and call this a Speedmaster. But it's not a Speedmaster because Steve's wearing the Speedmaster right now. This is a swatch. This is as much as they put Omega and Speedmaster on there. This is a marketing ploy to bring Omega back into the fold and regain some of the market share that it's lost against companies like Rolex. For a long time, Omega has kind of fallen out of the conversation where it's thought of second rather than as an equal to Rolex. So the other thing is that we know that companies use their entry-level products to pad their bottom line, to then be able to develop high-end products to sell in the luxury market. So this is just another example of that business ploy, which works. And this is a perfect example of seeing that marketing tactic work. Omega needed to get back in the fold. The watch world is going crazy. And in some ways, I think Omega has been left behind a little bit, um, maybe left in the past in some ways, because as we see now, they're still celebrating something from decades ago. But I will give them credit where they're doing it in a semi-innovative way. But um, if you wanted to call it the Omega Swatch Moon Swatch, I wouldn't take any issue with the name. Because then it's a moon swatch. It's not a Speedmaster. 
right? You're not trying to take that name and apply it to something that is 10 per like not even not even 10 percent the value of a speedmaster. So not only do you not own a speedmaster, but you don't even own 10 percent of a speedmaster. So if you really want one, you need to save your money and find one. If you yeah. like it because you like the design and you like the price point and all of everything else aside, I'm not going to hate on you for wanting to buy this watch. We all have our own personal preferences. That's just fine. And I understand the appeal to creating a case that's out of a new material. I think that the pushers and the crown look like crap. And I think that the case actually looks quite cool. <coughs> yeah, you're not getting uh, the real history out of the watch. It's, you're not getting the movement. No. Uh, yeah. But you get just a, a little flavor of it. And it, it's somewhat to be admired in some ways, but it also reflects probably the best and the worst of this cult culture. I think that the uh, thing that I was trying to mention was this is Ultraman uh, Orange Hands. And I tried to get the Ultraman Speedmaster a while back, but that's kind of a hype watch unto itself. But that's nothing compared to this. Obviously, since then, Daniel had, had tried to go to the Eden Center in Toronto to try to pick up that. Do you want to share your experience with that? That clearly colors that experience when you're done finishing your COVID cough? Yeah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... We had quite extensive conversations about this product. So we decided to, <laughs> to try and get our hands on one or two of them. Um, not the most easy process, but definitely one of the most ridiculous and laughable processes in recent history. So the store opens in Toronto, which was one of three stores in the country. Um, in a city of 7 million plus people, which seems in itself insane. And they did not open the store early. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll leave here and get to the store for 7.45 a.m. And, uh, and scope it out. We talked about it. Steve laughed and said, I should probably be camping out the night before. And I thought to myself, give me a break. Anyone who owns a Speedmaster is laughing at the prospect of these, not knowing Steve was actually interested. I thought he was not interested. I thought he was interested in trying to flip one. And he's like, no, I actually want to own one. I was like, oh my God. Okay, fine. You can have it. Fuck. So get in the cab and cab driver is a very nice guy and we roll up out front of the Eden Center and the Eden Center essentially takes up one square city block for those of you who don't know it. For those of you who do know it, um, you know, I approached from the south of the building and then for everyone, I saw a lineup that went the entire length of the block, at least two people wide kind of a thing, you know, like it looked like there was a lineup for a massive concert. So uh, I had a laugh and I said, like, this must be for the watch. There's news cameras and crews everywhere. You know, like every major news, a news source was there videotaping and interviewing people. So I asked the cab driver if he would wait for a moment, and I went and I scoped out the situation, saw that the line then went in the building and snaked around and then went down the escalator into the store. And I have no many, no idea how many thousands of people waited in the line for hours and hours and hours. Um, hopefully some of them got the watches they wanted. And then we know that as the day went on, Swatch announced that they were limiting sales from two per person to one per person and then in some locations they store they closed the stores entirely due to uh, mismanagement of the population and creating COVID concerns by having too many people in the stores and jam-packing too many indoor lineups so 
you know, my frustration with the situation is just how poorly managed this was on their part. Um, they knew how much demand they were creating. None of us knows what they were seeing on inside of their books and through their marketing team and the kind of feedback they were getting. But they, um, they were, they essentially designed this to get massive, massive, massive media buzz to get break, to bring Omega and the Speedmaster back into the fold at a time when Rolex and Patek and AP are just absolutely taking over. And, um, you know, they managed to get a lot of people to pay money for a watch that I, I probably wouldn't spend more than $200 to own. And because it says Speedmaster on the dial, I personally wouldn't wear it. But um, I know you guys like it. So, you know, maybe I'll have to reevaluate my opinion a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately it was a big hype move. I think, you know, there's definitely the spirit of it is admired, but at the same time, clearly marketing got a hold of this. But the moment that I saw that people were lining up like two days prior and everyone was getting a big buzz around it, the first inclination I had was, okay, people are lining up. We're in the middle of a pandemic and you can debate whether it's serious or not at this point, depending upon your location. But, you know, really, do you want to be encouraging people to just be storming with a mass gathering and being up close and personal and shoving each other in, the, in this day and age, and in this geopolitical atmosphere? You know, they should have just walked the line, just like you do with an Apple store with an iPad. And you just let people scan a QR code and it just lets you get your name down on the list of people for this watch. You could have them come in either at appropriate times into the store if you really want to do this launch by store, or you could just give them the QR link that allows them to just go to the link online to buy it online, which is the eventual plan. They're going to disseminate it to more stores for God knows what reason other stores were not included, like Calgary, which is why we had to beg Daniel to go and do it because everyone else I know in other cities that were carrying it or would think that I'm insane to even ask them to just drive a little while away from Vancouver to Burnaby. My friend's like, no way. I was like, good thing I didn't tell him to camp overnight. Um, but, you know. For a watch of $300. Yeah. You're like, hey, I need you to spend this time in line to get me a watch of 300 bucks. I would, I'm not even going to say what I'd say to you. I'll just leave it at that. We I was kidding when I said camp out. I was no, if you wanted me to wait in line for more than two hours, then I would tell you a lot of very bad things. <laughs> I, would, I would wait for two hours, but nothing more, just like you said. That's think, my limit. You know, it's, it's eventually going to come out to everyone who wants one. Yeah. Will yeah. I go and buy it online? Or if the store in Calgary gets it and they call me, will I yeah. go down to the shop? For sure. Am I going to yeah. stand in line for multiple hours? or? No shove people yeah. and have a, a, a ridiculous riot no yeah. well, no i think and with, sorry and and you know with that perspective like again my time is worth more than that and sure. as much as this is like an imbalanced passion for us three more than most people and yeah sure we like the fact that uh, perhaps this might be something that could go up in value it it just I think betrays the overall passion that I initially experienced for the car for the watch. So I think that, you know, will I buy one? Sure. If the opportunity yeah. comes up, but I'm not paying over market. Yeah. And now people are trying to charge 9,000 bucks for it. And like, yeah. am I going to get that instead of this? I bought this watch for 4,500 new and I invested in it further and bought two other straps with the point. So, you know, I've paid, basically the equivalent of what people have paid into these plastic bio ceramics exactly so, but anyways we've shot enough on them i, I actually <laughs> want to sit on it just a tiny them. bit more before we go away because <laughs> the last thing that i want to say about it is as we've been scrolling through how many variants have you seen rolex ap everyone else except omega comes out with a limited or a, sorry a special edition watch or they release a new watch and Rolex is like all right this year it's going to be green and we're doing one of them you know 
So it's like they give you one color and there is demand. It's it's interesting. It's the only alternative to their traditional design. Omega's like, we're going to give you all of the freaking colors and all the color combinations. I yeah. think this Pick is whatever you want. It's all there. This is inspired by the Oyster Perpetual when Rolex yes. came out with multiple different colors. Uh, and, and Omega even did launch their other line that has multiple different colors, which I'm glazing over. I, th I think, Daniel, you were actually even impressed with it. I didn't really love the color tones. They were kind of a metallic-y muted color. I, I personally prefer the Oyster Perpetual. But again, it's, it's all hype at this point. Yeah. Any, any further shitting you want to have? This is what happens when Daniel has tea. Next time, yeah. instead of alcohol, you have to be right? drinking out of the fucking horn. When people are like, when people talk about uh, violent drunks, it's like, no, no, I'm a very calm and relaxed drunk. It's, it's high tea that you got to freaking worry about, bro. High tea, motherfucker. High tea with those tiny little pastries and sandwiches. This is what happens when Daniel mixes ayahuasca with his tea bag. And... <laughs> yeah. no, the tea was delicious, but it, uh, no. I mean, I would, I would actually want to say the last thing is that the Mission to Mercury is, to me, probably the only one that will still look good later because it's the only one that actually resembles the Speedmaster. And the moon. Um, every other one is going to look like yeah. garbage. The well, mission maybe not every single other one. Much that rubbish. blue one looks kind of nice. Um, There's a few but, that I really like. I like, you know, I don't know what I thought in the beginning too. It's like, if you get one, would you want to go? But that's the thing, though. It's like, it's not like you're, if you're getting it, it's not like you're really getting it to replicate the yeah. speed map. You're getting it for the original. That's kind of what I'm like. Well, would you go which color? But if I'm going to yeah. go with a color, I think we all know what I'm going with. So there's no blue. There's Definitely. no question. Yeah. The yeah. boys go. I ain't, getting no, I ain't getting no oyster perpetual anytime soon. So at least I'll have my Uranus to. <laughs> when, I can, when I can get it, so at least I'll. At least I good. have my Uranus that I can't even get. Yeah, you could find my Uranus. That's honestly yeah. at this point, it seems like they're well. I don't know. At least it sounds like this is going to be more obtainable. But at the point, it's like fuck. At this much yeah. money for that watch, it's ridiculous. When it, if I can, right. like you said, if you can walk into the store and get it one day, I'll for sure go do it. But I'm not paying over, over um, over MSRP. Over no, that'd be stupid. It'd be stupid. Uh, it, 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 people who want to buy this watch that do buy this watch need to know that it is not an Omega. It's an homage to Omega yeah. by Swatch. So this is a Swatch. It's not a luxury product. And I'm not shitting on it. This is me just be speaking matter of fact. You're dealing at a different price point with a, with a different brand. While Swatch owns Omega and can therefore just lift whatever the hell they want and then make a product out of it, which is what they've done. Um, you know, they put Omega top, front, and center. That's fine. I'm not mad about that. Speedmaster shouldn't be on the dial. But it's maximum a $300 watch. And they can charge that much because it's an homage to the Speedmaster. If it was just a Swatch... It would be 150 bucks on the shelves and you could just go buy one. And that's just the reality of the cost of what Swatch is. So you're going to be spending more than the value of what the watch should be in order to get the name, which lots of people do. But then you do have to accept that you're not wearing a product of the same quality as an Omega. So don't expect that when you do end up purchasing it. And Make sure that you set the right expectations. Do the research. Decide if you actually want it. And don't get caught up in the hype. Never get caught up in the hype when you're making a purchase. Especially now when the resale of these is succeeded MSRP. And knowing that they will be available later online for everyone. So relax. You can get one if you want one. Set your expectations and do your research. And uh, I won't be mad at you if you do end up with one, if you follow those instructions. But if you don't, then Daniel's going to take off. So He's Daniel took my you. bandana off real He's quick. Coming for you. The moral of the story is never make Daniel try to stand in line outside of the Eden Center in the very early morning. You can don't get do it. Right there. I did All it right, once. Let's, let's let Daniel cool off and take a little <laughs> less ayahuasca here. Well, let's get into car news. This one's the big reveal. 
The 2023 GR Corolla is launching it in March. Yeah. It is coming to North America after the GR Yaris did not come to North America. I think everybody's been fine for it. Um, the GR Yaris having the three cylinder uh, homologation special uh, set up with lightweight uh, approach. It's basically a rally car production, um, never made its way to our shores, but the GR Corolla is supposed to be delivering that. Um, and so it's suspected that it'll have the turbo uh, three cylinder that is like the most powerful three cylinder ever made. Um, other than I think Koenig's egg. And uh, these are little teaser shots that we can see a little front uh, brake vent in the front fender and then a little bit of a side skirt that says GR4. That's gonna be built around the GR Corolla or the Corolla uh, kind of platform. Um, suspected that it'll be a lightweight special and have some of those homologation rally uh, kind of bits, but I guess probably won't be quite as hardcore as the GR Yaris. Um, the question will be whether they'll actually turn up the wick on the Turbo 3. Uh, suspicion is that the actual rally car ended up getting 300 horsepower, but I think that the GR Yaris is around 250 to 60 horsepower. So uh, it'll have all wheel drive. And uh, we had previously talked about this, although the GR Yaris was only manual, there's a possibility that it'll have an automatic. Um, I think I'd still take this in a, in a manual myself. And I, before Daniel shits on it, I will say that uh, I had been <laughs> the first to get an allocation for it. I just got an email uh, just telling me that I will get the first one. And yeah. they said, what color would you like? And I said, I don't know what color do you have? All I see is silver. Um, but based upon the GR Yaris, I think it's black, white, and the, just black and white and another white. And there was, oh, red. And the red is kind of like the Evo, Mitsubishi Evo red, if you can remember. It's like oh. a, a arena red, so it's more maroony. But That's it, ugly. I'll shut up. What's your <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and shit on it, Daniel? No, I shit want on one. All the things that I like. Yeah. No, I want one. Yeah. I'm like, I, I actually want one. That's why I'm losing my mind that you have an allocation for one, because to me, this is like the, my dream city car. You know? That's what I'm thinking. How compact. good would this thing be in the day? Or it promise it's compact. It promises to be fun, and it's also with the times enough that hopefully, if you drive around nicely, you can get some decent fuel economy out of it. And then it's Toyota, so it's we just know that it's going to be on the road as long as you want it to be on the road. So it's not a hatch. It's not a tiny hatchback, for, which is um, I guess which is appealing to a lot of people. To me, it's not as appealing. To me, I've owned a Corolla before, and one of my dreams had always been to one day find one of those Corollas from that generation, which was, uh, it was a 1995, and I loved it. It was this tiny little car, it weighed absolutely nothing. The engine only made something like 100 horsepower, but it, it felt quick and peppy because of how small and light it was. I fell in love with, the, uh, with Toyota from a young age driving them. So I can't wait for this car and um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Quick and Peppy, Peter? I, I'm stoked, man. This is like by one of the more re like uh, recent releases that we've been talking about. This is by far one of the more exciting I've been. I'm a big Toyota fanboy in like certain senses, like in the truck world, I've always enjoyed them. And I just, I love the reliability. Like Daniel said, it's one of the things that like, even like when we talked about like the Corvette and things like that, it's just something, you know, that like, yeah, I mean, that is a little bit different, but it's still the, I, in my sense, the same, I mean, it's Chevy and it's like, it's just, it's reliability when you're talking about it. It's like something where you could drive it for a long time and you just wouldn't have to be worried about it. And this, this car I think would be something that'd be interesting for the city. It'd be one that I would actually like, this would be a car that I would consider getting manual just because I think it'd be very, like handleable manual where it's like, it wouldn't be like anything too crazy. Cause some of the other cars where we talk about when we would like get them in manual, it's like, Oh, I couldn't even imagine. Like that would be, maybe, maybe you just have to learn to get used to it. Right. But it's like, I could 300, you know, 250, whatever horsepower, that'd be fun kind of thing. Yeah. Totally. Would you I go, go paddles though? You'd go paddles. 
Yeah, just because I live in Toronto and the traffic is so terrible. If I lived in Calgary or in the country, I don't know. Like I like I said in the last episode, I'm torn between both. I yeah. love driving a paddle shift. People yeah. seem to think that it's, you know, if you're buying a car, yes, it does come down to you have to make a decision. Which one do you want? You can only have one in the car, right? But when I'm talking about just trying to figure out which car I would buy and both are an option. To me, it's actually a debate. It's not as black and white for some people as it is for some people. Some people, it's just obvious, automatic, and other people that, you know, people consider to be purists, which I think is a bit uh, elitist at this point, go for a stick shift. Um, I don't think a stick shift is necessarily any more pure than paddle shifts it's different and they provide a different experience um so people compare them because they are comparable and obviously they're direct direct competitors but you know at the end of the day we know that paddle shifts generally provide a significant performance gain over a stick shift um they do give you a little bit less to do while you're driving, which is good for some people because not everyone is a drummer and able to do everything with all of their limbs at a high speed. Exactly. That's and nice. we were just talking the other day about someone we know who had an issue and, you know, slid their car out going slowly around a corner. And something that I like about with that paddles is me. that my left as I had mentioned to the, you guys, is that my left foot is available right away for left foot braking. So I can just left foot brake all the time without having to worry about a clutch. And then I don't have to worry about confusing my feet, which sounds funny. But, you mm -hmm. know, you see those people online on fail videos where they are about to have an accident and they just floor the gas. It's like, how did you... You're supposed to put your foot on the brake, not down on the gas. You know, so in my yeah. mind, if I constantly have that brain, that division between limbs, then, you know, it allows me to focus a lot between a lot on the braking aspect of driving. And for people who are not familiar with the term trail braking, um, there's a lot of great videos online. Driver 61 does some amazing videos explaining racing and driving techniques. And uh, trail braking is essential, not only so you can go around a corner without spinning out, but also to go around a corner and maintain speed and keep revs up. So, Except um, when you're going into a corner with a rear wheel drive, 480 horsepower uh, car with cup tires in the wet, uh, in, in low temperatures. And that yeah. was the guy we're referring to. With like, I should probably career. have been driving to the conditions or driving one of his other cars. In that you know? situation, yeah. you break in a straight line and you, you yeah. drive through the corner. But, yeah. but uh, speaking of appendages that Daniel always keeps free, um, aside from the obligatory penis choke, he always keeps his left foot ready for a good old curb stomp. And, Let's talk about your color choices, though. I feel like Daniel is definitely a precious black. We're looking at the colors of the GR uh, Yaris, and I feel like you're a precious black. And I feel like Peter is a white pearl. Yeah. But I'm uh, super white, you know, just to, just to fuck with Daniel. Yeah. If it was like a Ferrari red, I'd go for it. But since you've told me that it's like an ugly Ford red, oh, that's well, gross. Maroony. Uh, it looks like a Ford F-150 or a Ford minivan. You know, everyone yeah, knows that Ford them. red from the, from the 90s and 2000s. It doesn't look good on this hatchback. The black and the white both look good, but I would go for black. But the more I look at this photo, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should go silver. This yeah. does actually yeah. look pretty good. In the, in the, the silver early would early. probably be, be my pick in the end if it was an option. It's difficult but to I'm say thinking. without seeing the full car, right? I'm confused. Um, Why is it not on the website but shown in the photo? Well, that's that's a Yaris. I'm just showing the Yaris. Oh yeah, yeah. The, okay. 
they said, what color would you like? And I said, I don't know what colors are there. And they yeah. said, I don't know. I said, well, the, you know, I don't fucking know. I guess blue or white, maybe. Uh, I guess I'll go white. But I mean, now the more I look at this, this is like a titanium silver that kind of nice. shows nice features. And if it's like the Yaris, then it'll have like the, the carbon roof. And I think that that would be pretty nice yeah. and not not too showy but it would have nice subtle touches um but i mean ultimately it is a corolla so how much do i really want to be dressing it up well i also hate metallic colors when i get keyed and with this car i feel like yeah. i'm going to be a real asshole and drive around like i am a wrc racer and be very prone to people keying me in alberta yeah. people don't have respect for other fucking cars yeah yeah but you know, you mentioned blue, and if they made available that same color blue that they put on the BRZ and on cool. the uh, Subaru WRX, then that's the color that I would pick. For sure. There is a blue GR Yaris that's around the internet. I feel like it's been repainted or um, yeah. covered or, or like vinyl wrapped. Or wrapped, or maybe, yeah. Then I'd yeah. put gold wheels on it, and I'd be, uh, I'd be a mini. Oh, I guess I'd be... One with the family in Subaru, even though they'd make fun of me. Yeah. But it looks good in that, right? It does. looks great. Lots of cars look good in that color combo. BMWs look great with those kinds of colors. Yeah. I mean, even Toyota, the Toyota magazine here, they're yeah. like boasting about how nice the blue looks there. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah, it does look really good. Yeah, it's not the color blue that I'm talking about, but it's all right. Yeah. You want if that's the blue color, then I'll go black. Yeah. yeah. Kind of looks like a, uh, from that back angle there, kind of reminds me of that Volvo, uh, what, C, C70? What was it? Oh, Volvo yeah. Hatchback okay. that was in Twilight. <laughs> that's My favorite movie. movie. I know which one you're talking about. I don't know what Very it's called. Concerning. XC90, I think. No, it's not X no, because it's like, not all-wheel drive. It's not. Wait, is it all-wheel drive? No, it's it's based on the Ford platform. It's, it's front-wheel drive, I think. Yeah, that's right. It's based off of Ford Focus. That's actually what it is. It's a Ford Focus that they rebodied. So anyone who wants, everyone who likes them or has one, should sell them because they just realized they had a Focus. <laughs> Sorry. Well, here's the dilemma that I'll be having. Is I've this... also been offered this that's slightly different bro <laughs> a little bit yeah so g63 allocation offered to me um, for june build delivery august september and Fuck i think that. go for the corolla man yeah but the problem is that it's not a decision of either or well it's a decision right. of which one you pull right well the tax so on this is probably comparable to the msrp on the corolla <laughs> so the GR Corolla is estimated delivery probably end of the year. This one will come late summer, uh, early fall, and it's a no-brainer considering that they go 100k over. So right. I'm of course in, and I'll be driving up uh, and putting my deposit down. Oh, this is my goal right. that I came up with it. Um, which one will I hold for the long term? I think we know which one. Probably yeah. not this one, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but, you know, second time around, we'll see. This is, uh, so I realized that the first time I went around this carousel, if you go no no black, you have troubles. So I went, uh, murdered out, uh, what is it, Mag not magnetite black. That's what I had last time. This is obsidian black metallic. Um, went murdered out night package with the uh, the cattle, cattle cage at the front grill. And then went with the uh, quilted black and silver seat interior with the leather. And then carbon fiber trim, because that really matters in a uh, massive, heavy-ass truck. And uh, what else? Of course, the 22-inch wheels. That was definitely the right choice last time. With the, yeah, they look uh, amazing. The yeah, black oak uh, and the silver trim. I think that's the best part about the car. 
Yeah. And then I changed the steering wheel, the previous steering wheel. I just went on the base one. It, I mean, if you build these up, they tend to sell even better. So uh, this is black piano lacquer and leather. And it's way nicer too than the new steering wheel. Cool. There's For been a lot of complaints reason. about the new steering wheel. Yeah. People hate all the touch buttons on the new steering wheels by Mercedes. And by this everyone has, who has all those freaking touch buttons. This one has the AMG drive unit. That's apparently $600 for something that should be standard. So you can yeah. select the drive modes. And then I got the entertainment and convenience luggage compartment mat. And the hey. increased top speed because it's important to go 200 miles an hour in your G way. Like a breakdown. In Canada. Exactly. But, you know, kind of cool. It's super That's cool. That I'm way more excited about is this bad yeah. boy. Yeah, seriously, that's sick though. Either way, that's cool. I've never, I I've like never they're only going to make a certain amount of these GR Corollas. So this is my one shot. The G wagons, they'll, they'll come and go. But now is the time to, to get one, especially, you know, even for a short period, period of time. So I got my, my money down for both. Hey. So what's the uh, what's the deal for the average bear? Are they just available to buy right now, or were you contacted and offered one? No, I, I contacted them. And, you and contacted I, them, yeah. On the list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to buy one of these, what do they? What like? What's the beginning process like? Well, I I basically contacted them when there was that the like no V8s for G wagons time. Um, pretty much shortly after I let go of mine. And I was like, I know that they're not making any, but can you consider me? Actually, you know what? Even further back, I was even looking at the GLS um, Maybach. And I was like, oh, don't worry about the Maybach. I'll take this one. And just put me on the list. And then they're like, oh, yeah, sure. We have no idea when we'll get allocations with the shortage. And then I followed up and followed up. And then eventually they're like, fine, just take the June allocation if you want. So awesome. being no annoying and mm -hmm. being there earlier and being patient and seeing it through and then uh, not building such a light build, I think tends to make you a little bit more successful. You know, also asking friends to connect you with dealers you don't have prior experience with, also helpful. Right. Having friends. Have, a, have an introduction made. Yeah. 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 Cool. So it goes. Networking. Uh, why'd I, you pick this versus a Maybach? Because well, I, I love Maybach. I would personally probably go for one of those. Well, I mean, it's totally different, and I have no idea what the market is on that. And yeah. also, make only like one or two per year. And, you know, after my prior experience, I was like, hmm, this could really open the door to everything. Yeah, so, totally. That's cool. So, Very cool. Well, yeah. good luck. Yeah, anyway, it's awesome. The way I envision things is, you know, maybe let go of a car, pick up a G Wagon, end up with a GR Corolla, continue to hold on to the 430, and then let other things roll, whatever comes and goes. But uh, it may allow for, you know, an end game car to come around. That'd be very cool. Keeping my eyes open for all opportunities. Very Definitely. quick. So is we that, just decided the G wagon is lame. Don't uh, buy one. And resale value is terrible. <laughs> and they're overpriced to begin with. What you really want is a Yaris or a Corolla. That's good value. It is good value. But it'll probably be pretty expensive. But I mean it'll be a race car on the street. Yeah. To drive it in the winter, you'll be ear to so ear. So. It'll, it'll be so sick. Yeah. Bah, bah, bah. And Daniel's making his way out to Alberta, so we'll see what we take. On the yeah, road. man. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've uh, I've been confirming my dates and setting my plans. You know, checking my eyes and dotting my T's, getting the map set, and I was considering driving through the states this time because uh, borders open again, but. I've decided against that because uh, I like Canada better. Um, you know, respect. 
Northern Canada is incredibly beautiful. And um, I haven't gotten to do the drive across country before during the summer. It's always been during spring or fall, which means by the time you get a few hours north, it's snow for the entire drive. Yeah. And um, it is freaking sketchy driving. I, anyone who's driven across country in Canada in the winter will tell you it's, uh, it's an event. So if you're planning on a trip across country in winter, or in spring or fall, expect winter. Uh, make sure you have good tires. If you're leaving in September from Toronto, I would tell you to put on your winter tires for the drive, unless it's a freak warm spell season, you know. But check the weather constantly on any kind of long trip. Use weather radars. Watch for snow squalls, because when you get out into the country, you don't want to um, be surprised by those things. Well, so, that's our special feature, driving with Daniel, weather conditions, our weatherman from out east. It's amazing yeah. what a road trip or two and working on a sailboat will teach you about weather. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, we could do an entire podcast just based on weather radars. And nobody will tune in. <laughs> <laughs> one, subscriber. Right, one meteorologist who doesn't subscribe but dislikes every single video and is like you guys are dumb you have no idea what you're talking about the moral okay, of the we'll today stop. is go for the real speedmaster yeah and steal it off your wife if you can that's go right gr corolla and don't drive across the nation when people like daniel might be wearing their bandana and get really pissed off at you <laughs> and in line or making him stand in line, or either one of you. Just don't get near Daniel when he's been drinking tea in ayahuasca. That's right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good evening, right, everybody.